see what's left in here. All right, first, again, number 879. Nothing even in there. Yeah, it's in there. Boy, that's a really small one of those counter bores, spot, whatever deals. This Union Twist Drill, 3 8 counter bore, another counter bore. You're not supposed to drop those, Steve. All right, I'm not going to take that out of there. I got a handful of loose. Well, that's a little stub drill bit by the looks of it. I'll have to look at that on the magnification and see what that is. All right, this has still got that wax coating on it after being resharpened, or it's brand new. That's just a little two flute end mill. There's one that snapped. Two flute, two flute, really small end mills. There's a double ended one, but one side's broken off. There's a double ended four flute end mill. One side looks good, the other side. Actually, they both look good. Almost dropped them again. Here's a good looking tap. More tiny taps. More small taps. I gotta look at one of these taps in the magnification because I've never seen one. I don't think I've got any this small. I have a VT 2-56 NC HS GH2 3-0 So is that, is that metric? I found these little tiny short little drill bits in here and I can't help but wonder whether or not any of these belong to those uh, counter bores. This says HSUSA SP 316. I think this is SP. Well, these are all cleave. All these spot drills seem to be all these uh, counter boards and spot facers look like. Uh, well, this is 316 right there. Or I just say this was. There you go. That's a 3 sixteenths drill right there. So why couldn't you just do that, right? I mean, am I missing something here? Or is that what's supposed to be going on here? This goes in here like this. Doesn't really want to. Well, that's a tight fit, though. <laughs> it's funny. What's actually having, or what it seems to be having trouble with, is getting past the writing. Put it in this way, it goes in fine. Durr. That's a little tiny Brad Point drill bit. Well, not that tiny, but I mean it's. It's the smallest Brad Point drill bit I've seen. I'm going to throw these in here because I don't have the slightest idea which one of these end mills, if any of them, are brown and sharp. Somebody engraved this one. 002-14 something 90 pivot arms. Somebody really wanted to remember what operation they use this for, I guess. Huh. It has a B on it, so I thought maybe it was brown and sharp, but it says Canada, 11.30 seconds, so I don't think so. It's a four flute, three eighths shank, something 30 seconds diameter. Yeah, hell with it. All right, all that's left in here is, uh, let's see, a um, Phillips head bit, we'll keep that, a wing nut. Few screws, razor blade, 
Well, this looks like it used to be a... Uh, is this broken or is it just that short? I actually thought this was broken at first, but this is actually it's a little tiny four flute double ended end mill that has it's a Niagara 3 16 It's got that gold coating on it to help it last longer. Oh, there's a nice little find. Uh, you guys probably can't see it, but that looks like. Well, it's a rotary burr. It's a really small one, but it looks like it might be cobalt. These were just in these little plastic tubes right here that aren't marked, so assuming that's what's in this one. Yep, another one. I think that says anything on it. Well, they're definitely brand new and unused. They got a diamond pattern on them. They just type of metal they look like they're made out of. They look like they're cobalt or carbide. I don't know. Tiny, tiny burrs. I wonder what kind of work this guy was doing. Well, not the guy that I bought this stuff off of, but whoever he got this off of. I mean, this stuff is really small. So I just grabbed these little, these are, these are from the, when I bought that uh, Albrecht Chuck off of Craigslist. These are the little taps that I got with that whole shebang there. And I just figured since there's a lot of tiny ones in here, maybe I'd try and start keeping these really small ones together. Well, they can't decide what point to cut off size-wise, so it's a larger one. I guess what I'll do is I'll put these, put these in the bottom of this plastic tray right here. And completely forget about them. Die and have somebody else come and buy them for ten cents. I guess this one big tap I could put in my cabinet that I'm saving all my taps in. Alright, this next item I believe I got for $15. And when I first saw it, I thought, oh, how cool is that? Keyway, the Minuteman Keyway brooch set made by the Dumont Corporation of Greenfield, Massachusetts. That's old. This was sold by the Woodis Industrial Supply Company, 731 Main Street, Worcester, Massachusetts. I don't think I ever recall that place even existing. So, uh, So when I first opened it up, it was actually three out of these four brooches were in here. And then we were looking at something else later on and we spotted this one brooch just laying there. And so, oh, there's another one of those. So I got a three eighths and then a uh, quarter inch and a three sixteenths. And a one eighth. I'm not sure how these are supposed to go in there, but so there might be another one missing here. I don't know. This says number ten high speed high speed standard brooch set with collared bushing. So I'm missing one bushing, and it's got surface rust on it, and this foam is just completely like disintegrating. So it's kind of a mess. But that's why I got it for 15 bucks. You know, and I, <laughs> I said, ah, a little bit of rust on there. He says, ah, he said, that's what, <laughs> funny, he says, that's what emery cloth's for. 
But this is the kind of thing that um, I may have this and, you know, for a long time before I finally realize that I need it for something. But boy, is it going to be a nice addition to have here in the shop. Um, and also there's these little wedges here. There's only two on this whole set. And I'm pretty sure that's probably not going to be good. I don't know whether or not you can use. I don't even know where these would be stored in this set. So anyways, I went online and if you've got this same exact set without the rust and complete in really good condition, it's, it's, it's quite expensive. So uh, happy about that. Get one more look at that. So I believe the, to the tally right there is 125, but you remember I said I spent 165. So what did I spend the last $40 on? Well, went down into the metal cab, one of the metal cabinets, and spotted an angle plate. And initially he, he said, "Ah, eh, yeah." He said, "He's probably going to leave that with the bridge port, whoever buys the bridge port." But then, you know, as we got to talking, he decided to sell it because I saw this other thing behind there that I dragged out, which. And so then, I said, well, what do you want for that? He said, I don't know, make me an offer. I said, 20 bucks? He said, yeah, okay. And then he thought I meant the angle plate. And so then when I pulled the thing out, looked at it, so you're saying you can't do 20 in this? I said, no, I thought you meant the other one. So I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 20 for that one, too. So, I got this angle plate for 20 bucks. And I have a really nice one that is in the bottom the bottom shelf there that came with the Wells Index cabinet uh, that's commercially made. This one, I don't know. I didn't see any names on it. So this might be shop made, but it looks like, it certainly looks like it was precision ground. No, this is, there we go, right here. This is an Eclipse made in England. Eclipse made in England 306. That's a nice angle plate for 20 bucks. So the reason why I wanted this was because, well, <laughs> for 20 bucks I wasn't gonna pass it up, but also um, because it's a nice size. That one that I've got there in the Wells Index cabinet, that's that's a big sucker. It's probably about that wide and a little bit taller and it's just, it's a heavy thing to be hefting up and down off the table. Whereas this, you know, even a guy who's getting a little old like me can do that. So that, I was very happy about that, but that pales in comparison compared to what I'm going to show you next. You know, I got a couple of new viewers to the channel that have left comments recently that uh, basically they pointed out my shortcomings. <laughs> oh, they, uh, they didn't come right out and say it, uh, but uh, they basically uh, let me know that they feel that I'm a hack. And that uh, it almost seems to me like they're they hate the idea of watching me work on these machines because they feel that uh, these machines deserve better apparently than having somebody muddle their way through the repairs that I'm doing here. I just noticed I put this bag aside and you know, some more end mills here that went with that other the spring. It's an empty container. Single ended three flute quarter inch three eighth shank. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so anyways, uh, so I don't know whether or not they watch these videos too, but boy, I, I tell you, when they see some of the stuff I get here, they probably think, oh, what a waste to see a guy like that getting some stuff that a uh, Somebody who really knew what they were doing could probably make some nice stuff with that in their shop. This guy doesn't deserve to have a milling machine or a lathe. He's a hack. He doesn't know what he's doing. Well, 
So I got this for 20 bucks. And what this is, is this is a uh, an adjustable plate. Okay. It's got T-slots on the top. But it's also, I believe, it's a sign plate because there's a thread, uh, there's a uh, head right there. I think when you lift this up, yeah, there's a roller right here, or a cylinder right here. So what happens is when you move that screw, it's going to move that cylinder back a little bit, and that's going to change this uh, angle of this plot plate very precisely. Now. A lot of surface rust on it, been sitting around for a long time. But these are uh, in new condition. These are crazy money. You, still, you can still see the scraping marks on here. So, Oh, I'm sure I'll clean this in a way that will really make somebody angry. But anyways, so there's a label over here that's kind of ripped off. But then this label right here, I looked at it. I couldn't read it when I was there, and then after I got it home, got it down here in the basement, somebody etched 10 inch in here, because I think that that had worn off. And uh, this says, manufactured for Bridgeport machines, a Textron division, division, Bridgeport, Connecticut, by Custom Tool and Machine Company, Inc. So that, Another example of something that, you know, a guy like me will never be able to use, but maybe when I drop dead, somebody will come along and they'll find this and it'll go to a good home. But in the meantime, I got it for 20 bucks, and if I don't completely ruin it, I don't know if you can see if I can get the camera to focus on the surface there you can get an idea how much surface rust is on there but you can also see the uh, scrapings yeah that's actually not too bad it's focusing so you can see all the little scraping marks there and it's got this lip on the back edge it's got the t-slots and it's got this lip on the back edge so um, yeah, that's something that I'm 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 really glad with purchase. I'm really glad that I purchased that. Yeah, so those two angle plates at twenty bucks a piece. That was the last that that brought the grand total to one sixty five there. So um, that was money. That was uh, money that I really uh, couldn't afford to spend, but I I I did anyways because I just couldn't pass up on some of that stuff. And like I said, I'm probably gonna go back there and get. Um, the metal cabinet he had there and then the arbor press was sitting on a roll around metal cabinet and after I got back here to the shop I realized geez you know not for the arbor press but that rolling metal cabinet I think it might be the perfect height to have hanging around the Vernon lathe of course the Vernon lathe will probably never get put, put back together and running correctly because I'm the guy working on it so but anyways a little bitter Steve yeah, maybe a little.